Perhaps, Mr. President, you remember that beautiful day in May that you visited us here at the edge of the empire. All right, okay, let's go. It seems so long ago now. As I review these tapes, I am overcome with a certain sadness and embarrassment. In light of all that has happened these last three years, we all, you too, sir, seem so naive. And this is the most spectacular setting for the most spectacular crowd that we have had in this entire campaign. This is unbelievable. As you embark upon your campaign for a second term, take a moment to revisit some of the things you told us that afternoon. Now, there are two specific things that we're going to have to do. Number one, we've got to drive out the special interests that are controlling Washington. They have not funded my campaign, they will not run our White House, and they will not drown out the voice of the American people when I'm president of the United States of America. Reclaiming the government for the people. Making sure that big moneyed interests aren't running their government. Making sure that the government is, in, is transparent. Making sure that we're opening it up so that you guys can see what's going on having all our meetings that are now indoors and behind closed doors with uh, all the lobbyists in their Gucci shoes, we're going to make sure that they're happening on C-SPAN so that you can see what's going on. Look at this beautiful day here in Oregon. Uh, we've been hearing for years that unless we reduce our dependence on fossil fuels, unless we control the emission of greenhouse gases into the atmosphere, that we are threatening this fragile planet of ours. Climate change is real. We are going to cap the emission of greenhouse gases. Yeah. We are going to generate billions of dollars from polluters. And we are going to reinvest in solar and wind and biodiesel yeah. and mass transit. And we can create millions of new green jobs right here in Oregon and all across the country. Putting people back to work and saving the planet at the same time. Every single American who's got health insurance, we're going to work to lower your premiums by as much as $2,500 a year. And if you don't have health insurance, we are going to have a universal health care plan. Everybody will be able to get health care as good as the health care I have as a member of Congress. You won't be excluded for pre-existing conditions. We will emphasize prevention so we have a health care system instead of a disease care system. We'll save money make people healthier. We won't wait 20 years from now to do it. We'll do it by the end of my first term as President of the United States of America. We're going to rebuild our roads and our bridges. And if people tell you we can't do this, you just remind them we are spending $10 billion a month in Iraq. We can spend $10 billion right here in Oregon, right here in the United States of America, to make our country grow. educate every American, then that will make all of us better off. And we can make sure that every child in America has the best education this country has to offer. And that means investing, that means we're going to pay our teachers more money and give them more support. And I don't know about you, but I think we should make college affordable for every young American. So we're going to provide a $4,000 tuition credit every student every year. But young people are going to have to give something back in return. They're going to have to provide community service, work in a homeless shelter, work in a veterans home, join the Peace Corps, join the Foreign Service, teach in an underserved school, nurse in an underserved hospital. We'll invest in you, you invest in America. That's how we'll move this country forward. That's the call that has to go out to the American people. We can do all these things, but there's one other thing we're going to have to do, and that is we're going to have to get our foreign policy straight. And I don't think that spending another trillion dollars on an occupation in the middle of the Middle East is somehow going to 
make us safe. I think it's going to be a recruitment tool for terrorists. I think it will cause more problems for us over the long term. That's why I opposed this war in 2002. That's why I will bring this war to an end in 2009. There's going to be a real difference in November, and Democrats will be unified. We are not going to settle for what is. We are going to imagine what might be. Black, white, Hispanic, Asian, Native American, young, old, rich, poor, gay, straight. When all of us are coming together, then there is no challenge we cannot meet. There is no destiny we cannot fulfill. We cannot afford to wait. We can't wait to fix our schools. We cannot wait to fix our health care system. We cannot wait to bring back good jobs and good wages and decent benefits. We cannot wait to bring an end to global warming. We cannot wait to bring this war to a close. We cannot wait, and that's why I'm running for president of the United States of America. For a few months now, I have been coming to the square regularly, several times a week. It's not more than 10 blocks from where so many of us said yes to your dreams for America, Mr. President. I come to the square to talk to people about military spending. One trillion dollars for national security and defense. Oregonians share of national security and defense is ten billion dollars. This year, 2011, Oregonians will spend ten billion dollars for national security and defense. They spend too much when it could be spent here at home you know, for schools, and because we have enough troubles here. Like, if we're gonna spend money in other countries, we should probably spend it, like, on helping them. You know how people build schools in Africa? That's 10 times, you know, more effective than probably just spending it on going to kill them. That's just dumb. At the fringe of the empire, we are a long way from the levers of power. Oregonians are an independent bunch. We are learning to work together to make our little corner of the world a righteous place to live. What you offered on that beautiful day, Mr. President, is what we all want. What we don't want is more war, more killing, more energy, brain power, resources, money, and lives wasted on the madness of empire in the name of defense and national security. Mr. President, you promised a health care debate on C-SPAN. We want a national security debate on C-SPAN, where all Americans can get to hear the facts, sort the lies from the truth, and have a serious debate about how we want to be in the world. Do we want to spend another $40 trillion in the next 60 years on death as we have during the last 60? Or do we want to wage peace and invest in life with the same determination, patriotism, sacrifice, ingenuity, and courage as we have waged war? 